There's no particular complete thought that comes to mind when I hear the word intelligence. It's more of a string of thoughts and experiences that line up to form a question, so in five minutes or less I'll try to summarize. The human being is the most intelligent creature on the face of this planet. We've accomplished more along the lines of thought and productivity than any other species. We make cars, houses, skyscrapers, airplanes, cell phones, computers, and my personal favorite, soda pop. All of this is a result of our intelligence, which to me is a questionable value. Einstein gave us the theory of relativity. We use it to make bombs, which goes to show how we assume our lines of thought sometimes. I once performed a coin trick for my four-year-old nephew. Without second guessing or being confounded by the illusion, he looks at me and says, it's in, the, uh, it's in the other hand. And in my attempts to cover my tracks, I continue to relocate the coin, his words trailing my every move. Now it's in your pocket. Now it's in that pocket. I was amazed at how acute he was until he came up to me with his own coin and asked me to, not to make it vanish, but to make it multiply. He wanted a hundred coins and he thought I could do it. Now, I'm not criticizing his capacity for reason. He is four after all, but this, I think, is illustrative of how we as an intelligent species can observe and still just not get it. We're talking about a race that once struggled to rub two sticks together just to survive freezing nights, that now has managed to harness the power of fire for the sole ends of putting sticks in our own faces and giving ourselves cancer. And as for our superior logic, around 80 years ago, record makers began clamoring for artists to perform so they had content to print on their medium no longer with any relevant medium at all they are turning to state claim in music itself and without produ providing or producing a medium of any kind have still managed to convince consumers and artists that they are still providing some kind of service and that they deserve money for it and then there's me when I was 11, I was put through psychological analysis. This included the Stanford Standard Intelligence Quotient Examination, and my intelligence was given a number. My IQ is 141. I'm a genius. It's official. It's documented. I actually have the papers to back it up, too, bitch. But other than those papers, I have yet to see any evidence that would support it. I mean, when I was 9, I could think about and wrap my head around time paradoxes and discuss them confidently with adults, but once when I was 15 I invited a girl from whom I had a crush over to my house, and as we sat watching cartoons she said from the other end of my couch, and I quote, I'm wet. I looked at her square in the face and replied, did you spill something? Do you, do you, need, to, do you need me to get you a towel? And later, as she sat with her head in my lap, I gave her a pillow to hide my erection, all the while thinking to myself, man, I really like to get with this girl. How do I make a move? And with that, I show you this. This is where I live. This is my home. This is the home of a so-called genius. I've never felt the need to impress other people, and I've never felt the pressure that others have to excel. I'm just happy being and doing. And I can honestly tell you that I'm, that I'm happy with it. It doesn't do much along the lines of impressing the ladies, which has serious effect on my fit fitness as a human being. And so I think all of this, and I'm left with the question, what does any of this have to say about intelligence? I really can't tell you what intelligence is, or in some cases what makes it distinguishable from retardation. But what I do know is that we live in a world of very narrow margins.